Hey, it's me, GV, and welcome to Let's 100% Baldur's Gate 3 as Dark Urge. Uh, I'm going to go through this intro pretty quickly here. First things first, we have started and stopped so many Let's Plays recently. I'm acutely aware of this. Uh, this will be completed. You have my word. Baldur's Gate 3, 100% Dark Urge. All major content, all, you know, <clears throat> have everything that we can do in a playthrough, basically, will be completed. Uh, this game is one of the best games I've ever played in my life. It is the best game I've played recently. Uh, and it is the reason, or one of the major reasons, why I just don't even want to play Starfield. I'd rather play more Baldur's Gate 3, because Starfield bored me to tears. Um, and I, yeah, I would rather just play this game. If you don't know anything about it, you are in for a treat. And currently, at the time of this recording, I have just beaten Act 1 in a streamed playthrough on Twitch. So, everything after Act 1 is pretty much completely blind to me. So, we'll see what we do. I might just stop it there on Twitch and then catch up to that here. Uh, so it'll kind of be good, because it'll be like half me knowing about this game... Um, and able to explain certain things and then half me getting to a blind point where everything will be new for you and for me So without further ado, we're gonna hit new game here uh, By the way options wise we do have karmic dice turned off I'm not exactly sure where that setting is. I think it's gameplay karmic dice karmic dice karmic dice It should be gameplay as far as I understand. Yeah karmic dice. We have this turned off major important thing here. This means that we can't... This means that the, it's the roll of the dice, baby. It's the roll of the die. If bad things happen, bad things happen. If good things happen, good things happen. And we're gonna roll with it. Because uh, Karmic Dice... Karmic Dice basically makes it so that you can't get a fail streak or can't get a win streak. Uh, as far as I understand. It also messes with the game in other ways, as far as I understand as well. So, we have that turned off. And otherwise, yeah, let's go new game. I forget if it jumps right into the cutscene, so let's see. Bada bing, bada boom. Uh, we're gonna go balanced, by the way, definitely. Let's do this. I am excited beyond belief. Uh, this game is so amazing. One of the coolest, most visceral opening cutscenes I've ever experienced in a game. Uh, so brutal. So freaking brutal. Okay. Reset tutorials. Uh, sure. We'll reset tutorials just to help me explain certain things. We are going Dark Urge. You remember nothing but a path paved with blood. Unimaginable cruelty whispers to you from within. Can you escape it? Would you even want to? Your appearance in class could be fully customized. Play introduction. Let's listen to the character's story. Mm. 
My rancid blood whispers to me. Kill, kill, and kill again. My ruined body yearns to reap death in this world. And when this foul urge calls, it possesses my whole being. Injured, beyond repair. I know nothing besides this. I must resist the dark urge, lest it consume my mind. I must discover who I was and what happened to me before my twitching knife hand writes a tragedy in blood. Oh, I'm so excited. Okay, that's that's interesting. Okay, so for those that don't know, uh, this game was made by Larian Studios, and they did Divinity Original Sin 2, and it's very similar to this. You have characters that you can play as that you'll meet, but then you can make your own character, but then you also have the Dark Urge, which... I don't want to spoil anything, and I don't know anything really about it. I just know that this playthrough gets very twisted, very macabre, very messed up, uh, very dark as far as I understand. Uh, but you can completely uh, change how you want your character to appear and stuff like that. So yeah, I've done origin custom characters before this, but now we are definitely going to do uh, a, a Dark Urge playthrough. So. Let's go. Orge of the Dark Urge race. We have Elf, Tiefling, Drow, Human, Gith, Yankee, Dwarf, Half Elf, Halfling, Gnome, Dragonborn, and Half Orc. I'm thinking Dragonborn for this one. I want to look evil and I want to be evil. Orc looks kind of evil though. La, 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 la. Uh, tiefling is my favorite race in Dungeons and Dragons, so we've done a lot of Tiefling stuff. But yeah, I think we're going to go Dragonborn. A proud race that values clan and skills above all else. Once enslaved by dragons, they strive to be self-sufficient, not wanting to be beholden to anyone. Not even the gods. Uh, we will also put a, uh, a timestamp in the comment section below for when you can skip to a uh, after character creation so if you would like to skip through after that I will say it's very interesting at least to me um, but yeah if you want to skip that feel free to click the timestamp uh, because we are going to dive into this uh, very 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 heftily we are going to really breathe it all in so Dragonborn uh, we get base racial speed you can move 9 meters per turn I don't know if that changes depending on other Races you can move nine meters per turn. You think an elf would have more right nine meters. Yeah, I'm not sure if the nine meters changes but We're gonna be dragonborn uh, We are going to be sub race Which which dragonborn here do we want we've got black? I mean god look how evil that guy looks uh, Black dragonborn so do they do the things actually change? Yeah, they actually change the description here uh, despite no astral ancestral links to this mighty yeah, despite no ancestral links to the mighty creatures, these dragonborn share the charcoal coloration and fizzling acrid breath of black dragons. I think we honestly have to go black drag. I mean, just look at this guy. If that's not a dark urge like character, I don't know what is. But let's look at the other ones. Blue, brass, bronze, copper, and gold. Green, red. Red would work too. Look at that guy. It's so cool. Silver, white. Yeah, we're going black. Uh, so we get Acid Breath, class action, 2 to 12 damage, 2d6 for acid, spew forth a cone of acid on save, target still takes half damage, 5 meters, deck save, action. We also get Draconic Ancestry, the blood of ancient dragons flows through your veins, you are resistant to acid damage, which is great, because acid damage actually is annoying in this game, uh, and one of the more common damages. Uh, what are we going to play for class? Jeez Louise, this is going to be a little tricky. Barbarian. We've got Bard. I just don't see a... Yeah, I don't see a... <laughs> just those animations are wrong to me for a Dark Urge guy. Cleric would be interesting. Be interesting. Oh, 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 the Breaker. Um, cleric would be interesting to be a Cleric and then be like a Dark Urge. I don't know. That'd be kind of cool. Druid, nah, Fighter... 
Eh, probably not. Monk could be interesting, but we've done that on the Austin and Cindy channel. Three episodes of the Monk playthrough. Monk Dragon Board so far. Paladin. Uh, I've done two playthroughs of Paladin so far as well. I'll talk about my different playthroughs also so people know how much of this game I've played. Because when I say playthrough, I mean, you know, just playing the game with a different character. Ranger. Rangers are unrivaled scouts and trackers honing a deep connection. Eh, it just doesn't feel right. Rogue could be cool. Sorcerer Warlock. Ooh, maybe we go Warlock. Yeah, maybe Warlock's the way to go. Wizard. Okay, let's read the differences between Sorcerer Warlock and Wizard because I've never played really spellcasters that much. Uh, I'm going to sniffle here, by the way. Sorcerers are natural spellcasters drawing an inherent magic from a gift or bloodline. Bound by a pact to an all-powerful patron, warlocks trade their loyalty for supernatural abilities and unique magic. Wizards master the arcane by specializing in individual schools of magic, combining ancient spells with modern research. Yeah, I think we go warlock. I'm not much of a spell man, but I think we go warlock, honestly. I don't really like I don't really like the beginning outfits. I know why they have to do that, but. Uh, okay, so, bound by a pact to an all-powerful patron, warlocks trade their loyalty for supernatural abilities and unique magic. We get two cantrips. For those that don't know, a cantrip is basically a free-to-cast, like, spell or ability or something. So we get Eldritch Blast, evocation cantrip, 1 to 10 damage, 1d10 force, conjure 1 beam of crackling energy. We get Blade Ward, uh, take only half the damage from bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing attacks. So I guess we can cast that if people get close. We also get a Warlock Spell Slot, which we'll get into the nitty-gritty of all this later on. Cantrips. Change your cantrip selection by choosing from the spell list below. Cantrips don't use spell slots, can be cast at will. So let's deselect these and see what we get. Blade Ward, we just read. Bone Chill, Necromancy Cantrip. Prevent the target from healing until your next turn. An undead target receives disadvantage on attack rolls. Eldritch Blast, gotta take that, right? Friends, gain advantage on charisma checks against non-hostile creatures. No. Mage Hand, no. Create a spectral hand that can manipulate and interact with objects. Minor Illusion, create an illusion that completes. Compels nearby creatures to investigate. Poison Spray... 1 to 12 damage, project a puff of noxious gas, and true strike, gain advantage on your next attack roll. I think we take poison spray. Yeah, we try to just be, like, super duper acidic and toxic and poison. Subclass, the fiend? So this is a subclass of warlock. What do we have? Warlocks in service to fiends work towards corrupting destructive ends intentionally or otherwise and receive hellish blessings in turn. Sounds good to me. Armor of Agathis. Gain 5 temp hit points and deal 5 cold damage to any creature that hits you with a melee attack. Arms of Hadar. Prevent targets from using reactions. On, tar on save targets still take half damage but are able to use reactions. Subclass features Dark One's Blessing. When you reduce a hostile creature to 0 hit points, this gift from your patron grants you 4 temp hit points? That sounds really good. The Great Old One. Warlocks bound to eldritch beings in the far realm work towards inscrutable goals, gaining strange powers over entropy and the mind. Dissonant whispers. Fright a creature will be easier to hit and cannot move. Tosh the city is laughter. The creature must have an intelligence of five or more. The target can try to shake off the effect each time it takes damage. Leave a creature prone with laughter without the ability to get up. Mortal reminder. When you land a critical hit against a creature, that creature and any nearby enemies must succeed a wisdom saving throw or become frightened until the end of their next turn. Sounds pretty cool, too. Got a sniffle here again. Excuse me. The Arch Fae. Graced by a lady or lord of the Fae, you are imbued with all the sumptuous and scary qualities of your patron's extraordinary realm. Fairy Fire. Targets within the light turn visible and attack rolls against them have advantage. Sleep. Put creatures in magical slumber. And then Fae Presence. Charm or Fright nearby foes with the Fae Wilds. Beguiling, disturbing magics. I think we have to go the Fiend. Yeah. The Fiend makes the most sense to me. Spells. All right, so we can pick two spells here. Choose the spells you know from the list below. Spells require spell slots to cast unless a feature states otherwise. Armor of Agathis. Five temp hit points. Five cold damage. Arms of Hadar. Prevents targets from using reactions. Burning hands. Each flammable target is hit with three to 18 fire damage. I like that. Uh, charm. We're going to add that. Charm person. Charm a humanoid to prevent it from attacking. You gain advantage on charisma checks and dialogue. Command a creature to flee, move closer, freeze, drop to the ground, or drop its weapon. But... I've, I've noticed this is very hard to actually land. 
Expeditious retreat gain dash immediately as a bonus action on each of your turns until the spell ends. Hellish rebuke. React to your next attack with flames that deal 2 to 20 fire damage. Hex. Make your attacks deal additional 1 to 6 necrotic damage to the target and give it disadvantage on ability of your choosing. Protection from evil and good. Uh, protect an ally against the attacks and powers of aberration, celestials, elementals, fey, fiends, and undead. I have this on my paladin. This is pretty crap. Witch Bolt. Link yourself to a target with Bolt of Lightning. Deal an additional 1 to 12 lightning damage each turn by activating it. Hmm. What should we take? The Obs of Hadar, perhaps? Also, my girlfriend Sydney is joining me. I'm going to unplug my headphones so that the audio can come out of my speakers so she can hear. Hopefully, this does not mess anything up. I'll take a look at my OBS recording and see if that's the case. Give me one second here. So as far as I know, that should not mess anything up because uh, it's still coming out of the desktop audio. Hello, Cindy. Cindy, do you want to say anything to the people? Is the mic on? Uh, it's being recorded through uh, my a different software. Oh, okay. Well, hi. Okay. I just want to watch the game. Obviously. Yeah, she just wants to be a part of it and watch because this game is so amazing. Yeah, but I don't necessarily want to be like super super a part of it. Yeah, you know what? Yeah. I'm just here for the vibes, all right? She's here for the vibes. <laughs> uh, so we're choosing our other spell. Armor of Agathis, Armor, Arms of Hadar, Charm Person, Command. I feel like Command would be good. We're making a pure evil character. Okay, so then let's see. Pure evil, Expedition Retreat, Hellish Rebuke, Hex, Protection from Evil, good. Maybe just Witch Bolt. That seems kind of cool. Uh, background. Oh, we can't even change our background for Dark Urge. Interesting. A wicked moment, person, or thing that cannot be slain by sword or spell haunts your mind and flickers in your peripheral vision. You carry it wherever your adventure takes you, or perhaps it carries you. Medicine and intimidation, good. Uh, abilities I've never changed. I'm not sure if this is really something that you want to change. From what I understand with D&D, if it's an odd number like 13 or 17, you're not getting the bonuses. So you want to even them out, basically. So we could, I guess, remove one here and add two. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm not even going to change these because I'm not sure if that matters. Uh, we're going to edit appearance. We're going to go through this quite quickly because he already looks really evil, which I like. Uh, yeah, we're playing as a black dragon. Uh, we were a... For, yeah. Oh, yeah. Red, I think. A red dragon. Uh, so we can be... Oh... You should be a lady. No, I oh, can't. Come on. I, if you I'm doing a, it's just because if I'm doing a hundred percent playthrough, I can't like, I oh, have yeah. to play something that I can really like role play oh, and like. Oh, fair. You gotta be able to voice it. Yeah, and I just yeah. I was about to say you could be like an evil lady dragon. Yeah, I need to play more female characters, but it's got to be for like more casual playthroughs. Mm -hmm. Okay, identity male voice. Wait. Let's listen to the most evil voice. Be wary. It's open. Of kind things. of, maybe That's not. Magic. Where to next? Hmm. Let's hope the locals are friendly. That's a little bit better. Be wary. It's opened. More of those wretched things. Oh, that sounds. There's magic keeping this chest sealed. That sounds Where evil. To... Let's hope hells. Be wary. Yeah, I think it's five. Those... There's magic. Where to next? Hmm. Yeah, he's got the rasp. Okay, I love how this guy looks already, but I want to make him my own. So let's see. Uh, no. Just no. remember, you're only looking at this part. All of this yes. can be changed. No, so we're definitely going with this one. Crest. So this is like the horns? Yeah. Okay, so I really like this one. Because uh, that's kind of what I have on my... Uh, oh, that one looks cool, though. Oh, and it's like asymmetrical. Oh, I love it. It's got to be that one, I think. Uh, absolutely not. Look, Goomba looking ass from freaking Super Mario Bros. movie. Oh, yes. I was wondering what that looked like. We had this one in our other playthrough. This one's sick. I, I do so love the sick. water dragon sort of thing. That, that one's one cool. That one gives like alien versus predator vibes. Like alien oh, vibes. That one's not, no, cool predator too. vibes. Go back to that one. Oh, that uh, one's super, super this sick. This one. Too. Oh, it does. Oh. Ooh. Yeah. God, they're all so good. What do you I pick? Think these ones have hair too. Uh, okay, now I like the dreads. Ooh, I, the I like hammerhead the too. I like the hammerhead. Uh, God, that one looks great. I think we go with the dreads, honestly. The dreads are sick. But go back to, what was the one you were looking at? Was it that one? Uh, the asymmetrical one, yeah. I do like that one, too. But I, I'm thinking, I'm feeling the dreads. You are? The dreads are sick. Drag, drag dreads. Chins! I do like the spikes that he's got already. Uh, no chin sucks. Uh, spikes are cool, spikes are cool. That one's kind of cool. 
I don't know. They put so much... They made actually everything look so freaking cool. It's hard to choose. Uh, that one's cool. That one's cool. That one's cool. One little chin spike. What about this one? He's got like sort of a goatee. Yeah. But uh, I think that would have gone. That would go with the... Yeah, the one. With the... With the like, okay. Like, that, one, like yeah. that one. The spikes. Jaws. We're going to go with the most spiky jaw. That one's cool. How about this one? That's the one he had. I kind of like that one a lot, honestly. That's the one he had. Yeah. Ooh, that one's That sick. one's a little more pronounced. What about this one? That one's, I think, with the other spiky one. Yeah, I think this one. Ooh, maybe check out, like, some of the other ones. Mm -hmm. Like, that one... That one right there in the corner. Ooh, this one's got, like, the big... Oh yeah, that's kind of cool. Okay, let's go for that one. Skin color, the as black as night. Yep. There, uh, <laughs> genitals. Um, Let's just keep default. Yeah, cause like it doesn't really, it doesn't really. Eh, I, I have to customize every part. Uh, All right, so uh, we'll see. We'll probably yeah, we'll dong. blur this out. Uh, ding dong one, ding dong vulva penis default vulva penis. Okay, so I guess we'll go default. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, then we got body art, piercing style, fasten stars. It's weird giving. They don't let you see, like, the. Oh, there's the piercing. Oh, you, you can, can see them, but it's tough to see. Dark moons. Oh, he's got them outside of his nose. Yeah, I don't know about Dragonborn having piercings. I feel it feels like it'd kinda... be, like, a pain in the butt to even try yeah. to pierce his skin. It would really hurt. Although that kind of looks cool. Barovia fangs. Little spikes. Mm -hmm. eh, I'm thinking, yeah, none, honestly. Eyes, we gotta go. We gotta. No heterochromia. What about, like, white? How does that look? Oh, that looks sick with the... How about black? Oh, no. How about red? Oh, look, yeah, like I infernal. That, yeah, they have certain ones that are, like, flame red, too, versus, like... Yeah. Um, flame red, flame red, flame pink? No, flame red. I think we gotta go infernal eyes like that. Yeah, that looks good. Dark spheres in the night. Makeup. Uh, eye makeup style. Makeup one, makeup two. Are these just called makeups? Maybe we give them, like, dark eyes? Ooh. We could, but you know what else we could also do is look at the colors of, like, look at the different designs, too. Because you could also, like, complement his skin and give him... Uh, it's hard to tell for the Dragonborn because they're all just basically shadows. Mm -hmm. So I think we give him but just the dark eyes. The color, you can see what they look oh, true. Like. Yeah, we could make it, like, red. Mm, blood red. Ooh, I kind of like that. Look at the different makeup designs that they have for them. Yeah. Let's look at the different makeup designs. Uh, I don't like the ones that look pretty. I like just... Yeah, I like that one. We're going to pretend it's not makeup, and we're going to pretend it's just, like, a part of his skin, like okay? Coloration. Yes. And then tail, finally. Let's see what he's got for a tail. Oh, I thought that dagger was his tail for a second. He's got a little bitty baby. Uh, like I said, I don't think Dragonborn are supposed to have tails canonically, but that's fine. Uh, we will give him... I think either... They're also good. I think either two or three. B or C. B or C. Yeah, because he's so spiky and built up in the head. I, think. I like this one. Yeah, I do too. It's like an, it's like an alien tail. All right, there is our character. Uh, we're going to uh, the eye. Yeah, the eyes look sick. Okay, I love it. Enter the character name, the Dark Urge. Can we change this? Mm. Just name him Dirge. Dirge. Yeah, that's like that. That's the the fan name for this character. Is Dirge. Yeah, Dirge. <laughs> like a Dirge. Oh, actually, Dirge though. Yeah. Like a Dirge of Cerebus or whatever it's called. Yeah, we're gonna call him Dirge. A dark urge, but also dirge like a like a funeral song. Is that what a dirge is? I don't know. Yeah, I think a dirge is like a, a funeral song. Okay, here we go. Let's do it. Oh, I always forget about this part. All right, we're gonna we're gonna cut this part uh, because she's probably fine like that, honestly. Yeah, I do want to customize her though. Okay, and we're back. This is our guardian. No spoilers. Uh, let's do it. Venture forth.
Okay, and here we are. Baldur's Gate 3, 100%. Unfortunately, we've seen this opening like 400 million thousand times, so it's gonna be a little tr uh, get through it again, but we get through it, we shall. But think about this, though. So you've done the opening like four times as a paladin, so you're... And you've done it once as a monk. Yes. He's never done it as a Dark Urge. No. As Dirge. As Dirge. Oh, look how evil he looks. Oh, he's so sick. I hath awakened. I hath awakened. The blood in your head thrums and pounds. That pounding blood obscures who you are. An overwhelming loss of memory. How you ended up amidst these hellish flames is just as hidden. You have nothing in your skull. Besides your name and a headache. But you are in danger. Why do I feel like that's different? Different dialogue. It, I, have, I definitely don't remember that. Is that weird? I, also, when... Oh, it's because we're Dark Urge. Yeah, that's what I was wondering. Oh, that's so cool. Uh, Say your name aloud. You have, yeah, is this different? I feel like this is different. Take a deep breath, shake your head, and start anew. Say your name aloud. You have a part of yourself. Curse whoever did this to you. Say your name aloud. You have a part of yourself. Dirge. The dark oh. urge. Whatever that is, that is you. You will claw back the truth. But first, you have to claw your way out of here. I have heard, Lee, the uh, dark urge is canonical. Oh, Not canonical officially, but like apparently it is more canonical than your standard character. And we'll see if that's true or not, because I actually don't know. Journal updated. Escape the Nautiloid. We've got a Mind Flayer here who's got a Peridot. Thank you so much for your contribution. We've got a Nursery Dead. over here. Good. This is the pool that thing came from. The parasite now writhing behind your eyes. Reach towards the pool. Investigate the pool. Would we investigate the pool? I suppose we would. Skill check. Some dialogue options require a skill check, a dice roll that must meet or exceed a target number. Your character's skills add a bonus to this roll. So this is how D&D works for anybody that's never played Dungeons and Dragons or Pathfinder. I've only played one campaign. We're about to start a new campaign, actually, IRL. Uh, but yeah, basically you roll the die and it gives you a DC, so we have to get a 10, but then you also have bonuses based on your skills. So you can see here we have plus one from intelligence. So we basically need to roll a 9, which will then be added plus one, and then we will get a 10. So let's see what we get. Also, keep in mind again, we do have Dark Urge, or we do have Karmic Dice turned off, meaning... Whatever rolls, rolls. That's the way we're going to play the game. We're not going to play with no baby mode on where, you know, it's, it's, yo, know, your baby can't fail too many times, which I understand makes maybe a more fun playthrough for people that are newer to D&D, &D, but like, yeah, we're going to go by the, the roll of the die. So here's our first roll. Let's see what we get. A 12. Very nice, which added uh, with the plus one makes a 13. Doesn't really matter. I think an actual D&D you know, the DM, the dungeon master can like say, oh, with a 13, it's a little bit better than a 10, so they can put some flavor into it. But as far as the game goes, for all intents and purposes, we have just succeeded. Uh, a nat 20, a natural 20, if you roll a 20, is an instant success. A natural 1 is an instant failure. Uh, that, that is how it goes. So even if you roll a plus 1, even if you roll a 1, but then it has a plus 9, you know, with your bonuses, you still fail. Uh, but even if you, but if you roll a 20, you still succeed, so... The casing is fragile. The slightest touch could cause um, Also, I'm going to try to be evil here. Uh, yeah, I don't know how the Dark Urge playthrough goes, but I want to be evil. Reach towards the pool. Oh, okay. Restoration pods. You can use Restoration Pod to fully recover your hit points and spell slots if you were hurt. Oh, it restores your spell slots. Interesting. So, this is only a Nautiloid ship fixture. Okay, you gotta sound a little more evil better. than that, buddy. Come on, you're evil. Evil! Evil! Uh, let's see. We want to interact with everything. That's not going to be a part of the 100%. Uh, the 100% is mainly going to be all quest content. Basically completing every quest that we can complete in one playthrough. Pretty much. Oh, that was Lazelle's pod, I do believe. Okay, so I am decent at this game now, which means I wonder, can I jump up here? Too high, not enough space. Because I can see there's a cartil cartilaginous chest up there. 
And I'm wondering how we're supposed to get up to it, because you do have a jump action here, but it's not uh, letting us jump. Um, a lot of people point out in my playthroughs, like, oh, you missed this chest, you missed that chest. Like I said, for me, 100% means quest content, handcrafted content, seeing everything that a game has to offer in terms of... You know, particular quests and stuff like that. So if we, you know, it's inevitable we're going to miss chests. Let's go talk to them. It's a little goblin. I don't remember this. I do. Anything of use? He's got three gold. Oh, if that's it. He's just dead. Yeah, because there's just a lithid records for each, like, race. Oh, gotcha. Images of goblins. Basically, the, uh, elithids are, the, 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 the are the, um, the octopi people, the mind flayers. They keep records of all the races, it seems like. A thousand years of human As you can see there. Uh, we're going to take this elevator over here up and see what awaits us because we can hear some skittering, some chittering, some squirming. I don't know if we actually can or not, but uh, trust me, that is going on because we have a man over here named Mirnath. He's not doing something. He's not doing hot. I like your little saunter over there. Little saunter. Yes, you've come to save us from this place. From this place. Uh, looking at that us. face, I don't know if we'll free you. Please, before they return. So there's also passive checks, which will happen too, which is awesome. They didn't have to add that to this game, but the fact that they did is fantastic. So passively, we can do perception checks and stuff like that. You don't have any uh, pliability with that. You can't roll for that. It just happens based on your skills naturally. Um, oh boy, I'm going to have to do the Dark Urge voice. I'm going to do my best, because obviously he has a voice, but for the most part, when you click dialogue options, you I love doing the voices for them. Uh... You sound afraid. Why? The enemy. So many enemies. Who am I talking to? A man or a brain? A newborn. Born new from this husk. You realize you're talking to an intellect devourer. A minion of the mind flayer. God, I love how he looks. You. He looks so evil. <laughs> Destroy the brain. Oh, that's so ratchet. Gotta do what you gotta do. That's true. Alright. Mirnath fell to a lethal blow. You could say that again. Rest in peace, Mirnath. Also, what do you have, buddy boy? I feel like Mirnath was gone a while ago, though. Yeah. You honestly probably did him a favor. I was expecting more of these odd lobotomy situations on this nautiloid ship, but he's really the only one you come in contact with. You do come in contact with other weird things, but not... He's, like, the grossest thing on here, I think. Well, yeah, the intellect devourers, I was gonna say. Move your camera to get a look at what lies ahead. There. See, that's when I thought when you, I saw the goblin, I was like, I don't remember a goblin, I thought he would trigger a cutscene. No, no. Yeah, luckily, in Act 1, I know what most of the cutscenes will trigger by. I don't think we've missed too much, but, like I said, Act 2 and 3 I have not experienced yet, so that'll be exciting. rush past. A dragon swing, a silver sword, and a flash of your face seen through the strange woman's eyes. Oh. <sighs> My head. What is this? <sighs> Squall. You are no thrall. Blacketh blesses me this day. Together. We might survive. <laughs> you want to survive with this guy? <laughs> he looks so bad. Who are you? Who am I? Your only chance of survival. What made you think I was a thrall? We carry mind flayer parasites. Unless we escape, unless we are cleansed, our bodies and minds will be tainted and twisted. 
Within days, we will be gay. I mean, that's kind of cool. We get some, like, psychic powers. We get some tentacles. We get a little bit of a height change. We, we get taller, I'm assuming. We get some Cthulhu L essence. What do you suggest? First, we exterminate the imps. Then we find the helm and take control of the ship. We will address the matter of a cure for this infection once we reach the She's a material girl for the material plane. And her ass is hanging out. I guess that's the Gith Yankee way. You still like when you put on the Yankee armor and you also had cheeks. Yeah, if you get Yankee armor, you get cheeks hanging out as well. Alright, welcome to combat. Get ready to fight. Combat happens with rounds and each participant gets a turn to act. The game pauses around you during combat so you have time to plan your actions. Your turn. During your turn, you can take a move, take an action, and take a bonus action. Uh, obviously, that stuff gets changed depending on what your abilities are. Combat is very in-depth, very robust, a lot of mechanics, so we'll probably explain as we go through the playthrough. Uh, we're not going to explain everything at once, but suffice to say, you get this little wheel here, which is your movement. So we're going to move 7.8 meters. I think everybody gets 9 meters total. Yep, so we're going to move up to this imp. Uh, as Lazel here, which people colloquially call Bazel, and she is Bay. Uh, some people don't like her. I will say I do think she's Bay, although there is a Bay in this game that is the ultimate of Bays, as most people that have played it probably know. Uh, we are just going to do a main hand attack. You can see we got a 95% chance to hit. Also, the HP of the Imp is above at 6, so we need a 6, uh, which we hover over 4 to 13, so it's a good chance we will deal 6 damage. Let's see. Hiya! And we deal 10. Ending your turn. When your turn is finished, click the button in the right hand corner of your hotbar to end your turn. Now, we could also use some other stuff. For instance, Pommel Strike is a bonus action, so we could do that, but she probably doesn't have enough movement to get over. She could also dip her weapon, she can also shove, she can also use her specific action, Second Wind, to heal herself. But over here, she's a 12 out of 12 HP, so there's no reason, so we're going to end our turn. And go over to Dirge. God, I love this character already. I love the name. I love the look. I love everything about him. Um, so we're playing a Warlock. And I don't know what Warlocks do. I'm completely new to Warlocks. So what is his main hand attack? Two to five damage. So if you click also a main hand attack, you can see the other like sort of things for that particular thing. So we got main hand attack. Then we can also do piercing strike. Possibly inflicts gaping wounds, which causes extra damage on attacks. So that might be good, because if we get five damage and then he attacks us, he might die to himself. So one thing you could do is you can hover over something and press T, and then hover over certain effects and things, and it'll tell you what it does. Attacks against this creature deal an additional two piercing damage removed by healing, so that will not help us out. So let's cancel this. Uh, how do I cancel this? Uh, we can right click and then what are our spells so we can do acid breath since we're a dragon on save target still takes half damage can we acid breath both yeah but that's fine I mean we can use everything here um, is it a long rest just an action oh that's just a short rest okay what, what? where does it say oh it's a short rest there okay um, let's see eldritch blast conjure one beam of crackling energy uh, ninety percent chance because we have disadvantage. They're giving me a lot of bonuses here. Normally, if you're this close casting spells, it does not work. Uh, we'll just use Eldritch Blast. Ninety percent chance to hit with disadvantage, and we deal six, and it is dead. And then we can jump over to this other one like this with our bonus action. Hi, yeah, and get ready for the next attack. What will the imp do? Fiery bolt, which misses you, utter fool. Uh, so jump, I have learned, is very overpowered, especially on strength characters, because you can jump over to enemies uh, with your bonus action and then simply just slash at them or do whatever you want to do, like so. Wait, why do we have temp HP? Companion, some allies can join you in your adventure. You can control them in the same way as you do your own character. Click a companion's portrait to take control of them, but we know that already. Uh, also, biggest tip that I will say to new players of Baldur's Gate 3. You can equip item from your inventory, but a double clipping or... Uh, we'll take the light crossbow and we'll put that here. Oh, that doesn't work. Can we equip it? Yeah, so now we have a range attack. Switch between holding your ranged or melee weapons. You can find them on the buttons on your hot bar. 
Okay, biggest tip for new players of Baldur's Gate 3. Hold left alt. This shows you everything you can interact with. Like all the things appearing here. Huge, huge, huge tip. Incinerated Mind Flayer has a potion of speed and a spiked bulb. Okay, what else do we have? Some imps. Let's go ahead and loot them. We've got a hand axe. Uh, we've got... Uh, so I'm still confused as to, like, the red name. It's weird, because, like, this name is yellow here. Does that mean we haven't looted them? I'm still kind of confused by that. Uh, dead Thrall here with two gold. We also have another dead imp up ahead here. Let's loot this boy. Let's loot that boy. Yo, what do we have temp HP? So you can see over here we have plus four. So currently we have, like, 14 HP. That's interesting. Uh, I'm not exactly sure why that is. We did... Eldritch Blast, right? Which is where? Conjure one beam of crackling energy. Yeah, I'm not sure why. Do we have some sort of passive that adds? I, I don't know why that is. That's interesting. All right, so we have looted everybody. We will move on now. Uh, we can interact with this to heal, but there's not really a point, considering we are already at full health. Okay, we shall get out before it's too late. Trust in me. I know where to go. Oh, we have three gold here. Let's go ahead and climb. So, as you can tell, this game is a CRPG, which I think stands for Computer RPG. Let's touch the sphincter over here. Just gonna rub the sphincter very, very caressively. That's not a word, is it? I, I have a tendency to make up words. You'll probably notice throughout the course of this playthrough. Okay, so we have some geek machinery. Geek basically means mind flayer in Githyanki language, which Lazel here is a Githyanki. Let's push the first button. Psionic energy radiates from the prisoners, but they do not react. Okay, let's push the third button. Oh, the third button kills them. See, I always push the first button and then the second button. The second button releases them and then they actually attack us. Interesting. We'll take the gold. We'll run over here to interact with this person. We'll take the dark ring. One thing that you can do is if you know you're going to sell something, you can right-click, pick up, and add to wares. That way you can sell all wares at once, which is a nice little way to do that. We got a backpack over here with four gold and a malachite, which we're going to pick up and add to wares. And we've got somebody begging for help. Damn you! Get me out of this captain! We have no time for stragglers. Look for a latch that might open a lid. Warlock. There's magic at work here. Determine what kind. Okay, so we need a uh, four to succeed here. You can also click to quickly roll. We get a 12 because obviously when you roll like a million times, you get a little bored of the rolling animation. Warding runes. You feel them drawing energy from the console near to the pod. Are you satisfied? Mm. Look for a latch that might open the lid. There's no time. I need to get out of here. The thing's magically linked to that console. Let me see what I can do. I'll go look around. There must be some way to get this thing open. So, here's the tricky part of playing an evil playthrough. If you're truly evil, you would just leave this person to die. However, that is going to end up making us miss a lot of content. So I think what we'll ultimately do is have the idea that we will use these people. So if we free this person, maybe we'll think, oh, now they owe us. And that's even more malicious than just leaving them to die, perhaps. That way we get to do the content and continue to be evil. But as you'll see, this game is extremely good at letting you roleplay this game. Anything that you can think of usually is an option. So let's see. Uh, look for a latch that might open the lid. The construction is too alien. Nothing looks familiar. This ship is crashing. Do you intend, I to, intend die to die for, for power? The pod's stuck fast. I can't free you. This thing's magically linked to that console. Let me see what I can do. I'll go look around. There must be some way to get this thing open. The pod's stuck fast. I can't free you. Bazel, chill. Daddy, chill. Journal update to rescue the Elithids captive. We've got a console over here. 
the console appears. Look to... for a switch release, hit it warlock in scry and as you can see, yeah, depending on the class or race you pick, uh, there's also contextual choices, which is just a part of the reason why this game is a masterpiece. They do such a great job. Inscribe the device with the glyphs you sense from the pods warding runes? Interesting. Arcana, take a closer look at the powered up console. We need a seven here. We get a nat one, which again is an instant failure. Even if the nat one had like a plus nine bonus down here to add up to a 10, we would still fail because it's a nat one. Nothing in the appearance of the device betrays its purpose. Which is probably what it this is saying. You rolled a one on the skill check, a critical failure. Critically failing on a skill check will mean that you fail no matter what your ability modifier is, which is a part of the reason I love D&D. &D. It's such like a cool rule. Place your hand on the console. Suddenly, you feel a hideous squirming in your head. The parasite. Then discomfort fades and another sensation washes over you. Connection. Authority. So, a lithid, since we have a parasite in our head, with an elithid parasite, and wisdom will the pod to open. Uh, DC of two, so we need a literal two here or higher, which is obviously 18 out of 20 chance to succeed. And we get an 11. I do wonder what happened. I've never failed this, and I do wonder anything that's that low. The game obviously wants you to win, so I do wonder what happens if we fail it. Like if she just explodes in the pod, and then you don't get access to this companion. What if she gets turned into a mind player? You feel yeah. the biomechanical brain of the console process your command and yield to it. A shiver runs across your mind. You feel sated. Hey girl, what up? I thought that damn thing was going to be my coffin. Thank you. Your mind lurches into her thoughts. Her gratitude is mixed with wariness because you have a gift with you. You keep dangerous company. All right, so your opinion, Basel or Shadow? Uh, my opinion or Dirge's opinion? Oh. My opinion, I mean, they're both hot, I, but I always go for the alien chicks in, in fantasy RPGs, so I would have to choose Bazel personally. Uh, but they're both cool characters. Uh, you'll notice in this game, every companion is very well done, just like in Divinity Original Sin 2. Got a problem with Gith Yankee. More that Gith have a problem with everyone else. But there's more important matters right now. Survival. Let me come with you. We can get off this ship and watch each other's backs along the way. Did you feel what I just felt before? We're in each other's heads. I did. It must be because of those parasites they put in us. But that'll have to wait. Are we going to help each other or not? Alright then, let's get going. I'm Dirge. Shadowheart. One moment. What's that? It's nothing. Trust me. Enough of this chatter. We need to get to the helm. Now. She's right. But Basil, silly Basil, we have to 100% the games. We're going to come over here and we're going to grab the elaborate reliquary. Which I think is, yeah, actually locked. You need a thieves tool to pick a lock or you can find its key. We got a dark mind, which I believe is just like a miscellaneous item. A burnished necklace. An elithid manuscript, which we will take. Actually, what's the elithid manuscript? Can we read that? Let's uh, see here. My computer is not enjoying recording this game. I'm going to alt-tab really quick and shut out the Larian launcher just in case that helps it a bit. Also, I'm going to see if I'm running any programs that I should not be running. Yeah, usually my computer is perfectly fine running this. It's kind of weird. Uh, can we read this? Oh, I don't think I've ever read read this before. Faint images appear in your mind. A brain, a good Yankee warrior, and centuries Interesting. of I didn't quite catch that because there was no dialogue subtitles for it. But yeah, I don't know why they're Yeah, that's interesting. I never, I've never read that item, though. 
Go get the chest, get the chest. Oh, uh, we can't. It's locked. We have to go find the key. Oh, that's right. Oh, I hit the sphincters. Okay, it's the sphincter. Hello. Wait, I want to talk to you, little... Uh, He's gone. What's He's he... leaving. Come He's here. Go. He's going. He's gone. It's an intellect devourer. Come back oh, here. God, he's zooming. Yeah, I think he just says you are beautiful when you interact with him. Uh, I think if you... I think if you do the brain that you can interact with, and if it turns into your enemy... Gold key scimitar. Uh, I think that that brain will attack you. I could be wrong, actually. Inventory container. Certain items such as keys, ingredients, and camp supplies are stored into handy containers in your inventory. Which I've made the mistake of actually getting rid of, so don't do that. Uh, can I talk to you? Stop scurrying. I need to click you, but it's so hard. Wait, come back. Okay. Oh, I haven't heard that one. We have one. We have a mind flayer pod. Dazed woman is trapped inside the pod. She doesn't notice you. Fair. I mean, I'm pretty pretty noticeable if you ask me, but that's fine. Whatever. I don't care. Yeah, it's fine. I'm gonna take the slave mine, the cartilaginous chest with two healing potions. We got a dead thrall over here who has an eldritch rune, which we will pick up, a bottle, and some gold. This might unlock yeah, so that eldritch rune time. there will unlock Shadowheart's chamber if you don't pass another check. And then we're going to assume we should not touch this button, but because we should not, we're definitely going to. Place your hand on the console. As you place your hand on the pod, you hear something. A presence connected to the pod, commanding the person inside to change. I feel like this should have been a choice. Like, you hear that and you're like, oh, I probably shouldn't touch this. And then if you do... Yeah. Something evil happens. Yeah. Horrific. Because, like, the fact that you just curiously want to interact with something and then this hor this horrible thing happens to this woman, like, that's kind of disconcerting. Thing in. Dirge playthrough. Change her. Change to the pull of a lever. How? If we are not purified, this Yeah. Is well. We need to get out of here. Before it's, Before our, it's our turn. turn. The newborn mind flayer stares at you, weak. Oh, it's so dazed. cute! It's a little newborn. I don't know if I'd call that cute. It's just as cute as another newborn. Those, right. the brains are cuter, honestly. I hate the brain. They have cute voices, but they're horrific creatures. You gonna tell me that that friggin' Cthulhu over there is cute? No. Naked Cthulhu not. in the bin? Naked, na naked Squidward. <laughs> Elaborate reliquary, which now we have the key for. We have gold, and again, right click, add to wares. I don't know if the stones are actually used for anything, but we're going to just add all the stones. I haven't found a use for them yet. You might be able to use them for enchanting or something. I don't know. Either way, we're going to come in here. Uh, we can also use this, even though we're at full health. We have a cerebral aquarium, uh, which we can attack and explode if we wish. Also, why is this on fire? Uh, if you step in that, you will take fire damage. We are nearing the helm. Once inside, do as I say. Who put you in charge? I'll trust my own judgment. Kenyak. Kenyak. Love Lazel. All right, so I will mention before we enter this room of rooms here, there is an achievement that is missable, and it is to kill the big bad man. I don't know if we'll try. I mean, I definitely know better how to do combat now, so maybe it's possible. I, what kind of weapon do we use as a warlock? Daggers and short swords? Hmm. I do feel it's easier if you have someone else playing with you, because then you have the full four people. Yes, that is true. Uh, we'll call this one Dirge Main Save. We're going to make a save here. Uh, yeah, it is possible, but it's also heavily RNG-based, because I feel like you need the Mind Flayer to be attacking uh, this guy for you. And if he misses a lot, then you're just not going to be able to do it. Talk about good head. Bro, you're going to kill one of these devil guys but lose to, like, level 1 imps? You don't control me. Do it. We will deal with the Gake afterwards. I feel like Lazelle's hatred for the Gake would outrank 
her wanting to follow its orders. The enemy of my enemy. Okay, so we have 15 turns to escape. Reach the transponder before the Nautiloid crashes. Now, like I said, if you kill Commander Zulk here, you will get his unique sword and you will get an achievement, which I'm almost tempted to try since it is a 100%. I've done it. I do have the achievement, but we were unable to actually escape because what happens is this guy's on your team for now. However, if you kill Zulk, he will turn against you and then you have to fight a level 8 Mind Flayer's level 1s. So basically, it's incredibly difficult and incredibly annoying, and I don't think it's worth it, but we'll see. We'll just start off by going for the Lesser Hellsbore. What method? Send someone up to sit by the thing. Yeah, but I think you need your people to be all attacking him, because he's got 158 hit points. Sure, long range. So yeah. Someone long range up there so they can sit up there. Yes. And then... T is possible. But we're going to start off getting rid of these little lesser creatures, like the Lesser Imp, which we can only do five damage to, and then we can get angry that we didn't kill him and shove him away. Uh -uh. We have failed the athletics. It's an athletics check. We've also got Bazel here, uh, who starts with a long, a short bow, so we can do a ranged attack, which is how much damage exactly? Two to seven. This thing has eight, so we can't kill it. However... 4 to 13 for a main hand attack. 75% chance to hit. We deal 8. Per. Uh, we can also dip our weapon in fire. Pretty sick. Which I don't know what that does. I'm assuming it adds an extra, yeah, 1d4 fire damage. So potential up to 4 extra fire damage basically on top of your normal attack rolls. Then we have Shadowheart who has no range. It looks like she starts with a shovel. However, it's a mace. Um... Can it we? Like a yeah, it looks like she's she's a grave digger or something. <laughs> uh, so we are going to use the dash action, which is an action, which means we'll only have a bonus action after we do this, and then we're just going to dash as far as we can, or we can dash to the imp. Yeah, let's do that. I guess it's Shadowheart. Uh, and then because the dash is an action for the cleric, Shadowheart's a cleric, we can't really do anything else. We could cast Healing Word or Shield of Faith, but it doesn't really matter, spoiler alert, for this first area, because you're basically guaranteed to win. Uses a ranged attack on Lazel, which misses. Uses Fiery Bolt on Lazel, which misses. This guy attacks the Mind Flayer. See, the problem is you need him to land his attacks on Zulk. If he doesn't, it's like basically impossible to kill him, so... If he does land his attacks, maybe we'll go for the sword, but so far he's missed. Taking the disengage action lets you leave an enemy's melee range without taking an opportunity attack, but how dare you, we're going to take the opportunity for some XP here. Dark One's Blessing? What is that? Is that my conditions Dark One's what? Okay, can I do this? Yeah, it wants to, oh, wait, it wants to tell me. Gain temporary hit points equal to Charisma Modifier and Warlock level combo- Is that specifically the Dark One subclass, or is that the Dark Earth? I'm confused by that. If anybody knows in the comment section, let me know. Anyways, uh, we are going to move up here, and we are going to end the turn. Next up, we have Lazel, who can jump really far. Path is interrupted. What you talk about? What do you mean, path is interrupted? Is it the silly old boar? Okay, we can do that. Hiya! So yeah, jumping is really good because it basically lets you use more of your movement um, if you're if you have like a strength character, basically. If you have, because I believe jumping goes off of strength, so you can get more ground if you move. Basically, ninety-five percent chance to hit the lesser imp with a main hand attack. We deal uh, fourteen damage. It is dead. End turn. We have Shadowheart now, who will do the dash action as well. Wait, why can't we do the dash action? Cover more... We haven't used an action this turn. Am I confused? Did we do an action? Uh, those are all, I think you have to do one of those things. Yeah, because we only have our bonus action, and these are bonus actions. But I'm wondering why we didn't do an action, though, this turn. I am confused. Either way, we will jump over here as Shadowheart. Oh, do we want to go for this guy? 150 HP. We have 14 turns. He will only attack. Yeah. Just send someone up by the thing and then go nuts. Yeah. That could be turn, the play. Sit, you know. Yeah, I think we'll send Shadowheart because she's the most useless, I think. 
Okay, and we've got Commander Zulk who misses the Mind Flare. This guy misses Commander Zulk. Okay, let's run up here. What do we have as a Warlock? Swift as my feet we've got Acid Breath, 2 to 12 damage. Spew forth a Cone of Acid. Let's do it. 8 damage. And I guess he gets... Does it not leave Acid on the floor? Target still takes half damage on save. We could shove him. If it did leave Acid, we might be able to dip it in Acid. I'm not sure, but we'll just end turn. What's this potion? Gain an extra ash, uh, action, a plus two bonus to armor class advantage on deck saving throws and double your movement speed. When the condition ends, become lethargic. Interesting. I don't know about that. Uh, we've got a fiery sword as Lazel. And what abilities does Lazel have? So we can hit the main hand attack and it'll show us all of our melee attacks now. Dipped in fire. Cool. So we've got... 5 to 17 damage, which is crazy damage. What the heck? I guess that's because of the 1d4 fire. We've got Rush Attack, which deals less. We've got Lacerate, which deals 5 to 17 as well, and also applies a bleed for a chance. So let's do that. 40% chance to hit. We miss. We'll do a Pommel Strike. 40% chance to hit. We deal 1, and he saves. Your attack was resisted in the end, and he took half damage. Examine an entity to see its resistances. Okay, enter. Now we've got Shadow Heart. Let us run ahead, because yes, we will run to the transponder. Hurry, I'm going, stuck. girl. I'm going. Bear with me. All right, we got an imp, an imp, and a hellbore. We will do. Ah, crap. She doesn't have range attack. However, she does have a fire bolt cantrip. 1 to 10 damage, uh, 1d10 fire damage. We've also got Guiding Bolt, level 1 evocation spell, 4 to 24 damage. The next attack roll against this target has advantage. Oh, the next attack roll against this target. Oh, cool. Okay, so we can use this bolt on Commander Zulk. 40% chance it misses. We can also use Shield of Faith on... Do we want to give Cthulhu? It doesn't really matter if he dies, though. Uh, yeah, Zulk doesn't attack us, so let's give the Shield of Faith to Cthulhu, and then we'll end our turn. Commander Zulk attacks Cthulhu for 11. Cthulhu attacks back for 13. That's good, that's good. I don't know, we're dealing with the transponder, don't worry. There's three of us, dude, we don't need all yeah, of us we, at the transponder. We got it, we got it, chill out. Eldritch Blast, Poison Spray, 1 to 12 damage, Burning Hands, 3 to 18 damage, but I'm assuming this guy has... Why can't I right-click and examine? Is it because I have my main hand attack select? I don't, though. I'm... Examine? Hello? Can I do it up here? Zulk, 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 Zulk. Alright, uh, I'm assuming this guy has fire defense, but let's see... Oh! If it's rain... If it's an area of effect, it always hit? No way. Let's see. Oh, interesting. We could dip our weapon or shove or jump. Uh, let's just get behind him. I don't think we can dip the weapon. I was just saying if like the fire left behind something. Okay, we got Bazel here. Let's see. Uh, rush attack, dip and fire. That'd be cool if we could dip our weapon in his weapon. Just kind of, Boop, thanks. Okay, 40% chance to hit. We miss, not doing too great. Let's end our turn. We've got Shadow Heart now, who we will get in position for the uh, transponder. Let's do a fire bolt on the lesser imp. Or we actually we just move up to him and attack him. Probably a good idea. Yeah. You gotta get uh 85% chance to hit. We hit for two. Uh we can't dip anything, so let's end our turn. Lesser Imp uses Fiery Bolt on Shadowheart and misses. Lesser Hellbore deals a Tusk attack and misses. Lesser Imp deals one damage to Shadowheart. Zulk critically misses. Ooh, 22 damage from the Mind Flare. Not bad, not bad. Poison Spray, project a puff of noxious gas. Is this like specifically on somebody? Does this do an area of effect? What about Eldritch Blast? 16% chance to hit. What about a main... What about a main attack? 30% chance to hit. Um, I'm worried about using Poison Spray because I don't know where this actually... Is it a target or does it... Okay, I'm just going to use Poison Spray on him and see what happens. Three damage of Poison Damage. Nice. Okay. 
end turn. We've got Bazel. Let's go ahead and go for a main attack. 40% chance to hit. She misses. Okay, then we have Shadow Heart. We will attack. What does her main attack do? Two to seven damage. Okay, so we need four damage here. She gets three. Come on, Shadow Heart. Pick up the pace here. Miss on Shadow Heart. We get an opportunity to attack on the boar, which misses. Tusk attack, which misses Shadow Heart. Critical miss, which misses Shadow Heart. Miss on Cthulhu. Cthulhu misses his attack. So many misses going all around here. Oh, we could do poison spray. Conjuration can't. Oh, you can just do this over and over again. Just uses an action. Eldritch Blast, 16% chance hit to hit, 30% chance to hit with our main attack. Let's do our main attack and miss. We got Lazel, main attack, and miss. Getting some... No, oh, bad misses here. 85% uh, chance to deal one damage. We deal three. Enter. Lesser Imp. Fiery Bolt on Shadowheart for two. That is fine. Opportunity attack for five. He runs over to Zalk. Tusk attack on Lazel. Okay, now these boys activate, which gets scary. So these guys come in, these two Cambians. Uh, and they're using the dash action to get some extra movement here. He deals... I think if, if he kills the Mind Flayer, we have to immediately abandon. The Mind Flayer is at 27 HP, so we might be able to take two more hits. You're low on hit points, use a healing potion. I'm not low on hit... Who's low on, on hit points? What? Okay, 30% chance to hit. Come on. Misses. Alright, 40% chance to hit. Come on. Misses. Super unfortunate. Alright, we got Shadow Heart. Uh, oh, and that Lesser Hellbore. Can we hit the Lesser Hellbore? We're fine. We got nine turns. We're all good. 60% chance to hit and deal three damage. Ten damage. Beautiful. Alright, now we're going to run up to this Imp. And we don't... Yeah, if we move right here, it'll trigger a cutscene. Uh, what? Okay, we're going to end turn. Okay, this guy moves around, deals Fiery Bolt, and misses on Shadow Heart. These guys are going to dash forward. I don't know who these guys attack. I've never actually seen them attack somebody. Because usually we trigger the cutscene before they come in. Kill them or your spine is He needs to land this if we have any chance. He misses it. Okay, so I think we have to just trigger this. Uh, yeah, 78 HP. I don't think it's going to happen. Mm. The Mind Flayer cannot do it. This dude is like the king of ducking and weaving. Yeah, the Mind Flayer basically has to land every attack. Uh, so we will do an Eldritch Blast on the Lesser Imp. Let's see if we hit. 90% chance to hit and miss. Wow, these misses are crazy. Okay, we got Lazelle here, who doesn't get opportunity attacked when she moves away from Commander Zalk, which is interesting. I'm assuming that's just because the game wants you to succeed here. Uh, we will do a ranged attack. 85% chance to hit the Lesser Imp. And we deal six, and it is dead. We will also use Second Wind to heal two points. And then we've got Shadowheart. Shadowheart, activate the transponder! Might as well. The Helm's alien transponder. You made it in time.
we've done it. We were saved at the very last second. Can you believe it? Can you believe it? You half expected your memories to return once you were free of the Mind Flayer ship. But your past is still an aching void. If you don't find a way to remove the tadpole burrowed in your brain soon, your future will be as blank as your past. Your head whispers vengeance. You cannot wait to slice your way forth, seeking whatever wrought this tragedy upon Very you. Very interesting dirge dialogue there, which is actually different. Normally you get a choice to say something there. And we have done it. We've escaped the Nautiloid, and this will mark the end of this first episode. If you want to see more, consider supporting the series by leaving likes, comments, subscribing with the bell turned on, and consider going the extra mile by checking out the Twitch streams and the uh, Patreon. And I will see you all in the next episode. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.